station. You're watching News Channel 9 at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Jeff Kulikowski. And I'm Christy Casciano. Summer is rolling right along, which brings its own unique set of health concerns. Sure does. So let's take a few minutes to check in with Onondaga County Health Commissioner, Dr. Katie Anderson. Dr. Anderson, good, so good to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so let's start here, uh, Jamesville Beach, uh, the swimming area, um, not the actual park itself. It has been closed uh, for several days now because of algal blooms. Bring us up to date. What is it still closed um, and what happened here? Yeah, so let's start with what is a harmful algal okay. bloom? Because to be clear, algae are normal in lakes. We mm -hmm. all know that. We worry about algae when there's a certain type of bacteria that really likes to grow quickly in warm water mm -hmm. or water that's been exposed to increased nutrients. So fertilizer runoff, and animal waste. Mm -hmm. And this t certain type of bacteria can release a toxin. And when it grows and forms a mat on the water or a bloom, it can be a risk to people, this mm. toxin. Um, and people can be exposed in multiple ways. It can come in contact with their skin. They can inhale it or they can swallow it mm. if they're swimming. For people, it causes mostly mild but very unpleasant symptoms like headache, nausea, vomiting. They're mostly fine, mm -hmm. but it's unpleasant. For pets, it can be fatal, and there's oh. a high fatality rate. Wow. So algal blooms are certainly something at the health department and countywide we really are keeping an eye out for this summer. Right. Have people actually gotten sick? Have you had any local cases? I don't know that we've had any cases reported to us. It's not a reportable disease, um, but it's known that when people come in contact with these blooms, they can have bad health effects. Are you starting to see these come up more often? Again, the algal blooms, the harmful uh, type of algae. Is it happening more or are we just maybe hearing about it more? So there's general agreement that the algal blooms are happening more frequently yeah. and maybe worsening. And a lot of that ties back to something that keeps coming up these days, which is climate change. Mm -hmm. So these bacteria like to grow in warm water. So when we have warmer summers, for example, that can foster the blooms. They also like to grow in environments, again, where there's nutrients coming into the lake. So if we have a heavy rainfall, these extreme rainstorms, that can cause increased water to kind of flush into the lake and give the bacteria more food to grow. So when those warnings are issued, people really need to pay attention to it. And then even if they have dogs that like to go swimming in the lake, keep them out of that water if those uh, hazards have been issued. Right. So when the health department closes down a beach and issues a warning, the advice is for people, of course, don't fish. Don't swim, don't wade, and don't let your pets do it. Yeah. If you come in contact, they need to wash themselves off with clean water, but it can be very mm -hmm. serious, particularly for animals. Last one on this one, quickly. Jamesville is going to probably stay closed for a, a little while longer, you think? Or? So the way that these get managed is when the bloom goes away, yeah. then the health department will go out and test the water and see if the toxin is still there. If it's not there anymore, the beach will be reopened, and we certainly want to reopen it as soon as is safe. Okay. All right. Well, we saw wildfire smoke come into our area once again. It wasn't quite as thick and heavy, yet still raised a lot of concerns, especially for people who are vulnerable to that. So is this something that we're going to have to keep watching, Dr. Anderson? Yeah, so the air quality worsened again this week, and unfortunately, it's likely something that we're going to be seeing off and on for the rest of the summer. Um, again, relating to the Canadian wildfires. To be clear, though, um, the evidence is clear for people who live in areas where they are consistently, chronically exposed to poor air quality. Not here. This is a, this is a temporary problem. There's health effects if you're chronically exposed. For short-term exposures, we still need more research and we need more data. But as, you, as you've said, the highest risk and the people who need to be tracking this the most closely are the very old, the very young, and people with underlying heart and lung diseases because they could have acute effects. So when we, um, maybe last one will be a squeeze in here. Um, so when we hear about these alerts and we do the air quality index, we give you what the number is in the range and things like that. How seriously should people be taking this? Because I'm already getting the sense mm -hmm. people are getting, you know, fatigued with this. I'm seeing, again, not as bad as it was before, but less masks outside. Yeah. Uh, more people going, well, I'm going to open the windows anyway. How serious should we be taking these? Well, it's a little hard to say because a lot of it comes down to a subjective decision. Yeah. How, how at risk am I? How do I feel when I'm exposed mm -hmm. to this air? When we were in the 400s, that was a different situation. Yeah. But everyone should be tracking the air quality, airnow.gov, and then making decisions for themselves if they should be inside or wearing a mask, depending on how it's making them feel. And we're going to be watching this long term though, right, until those wildfires are out is going to be a problem that we have to be concerned about. That's correct. Yeah. Unpredictably, it may happen again this summer. So we're going we're gonna to have to keep an eye out and roll with it. All right. Dr. Katie Anderson from the uh, Onondaga County Health Commissioner, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We'll do this again soon. Thank you both.
do appreciate her time. We'll check our top stories now. A Syracuse man has been arrested after police say he threatened to bomb Upstate Community Hospital. They say 23-year-old Jeffrey 